So you can see we got a jam-packed agenda, um, and I just want to get get cracking on it. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I want to talk about the four steps to patch management. And for that, I'm going to try to we're going to do live demo. It's always fun to do, right? Um, so we're going to go and we're going to jump into uh, the SAS2 server. This is all SAS2, and uh, this applies pretty much the four steps apply to everyone. Whether it doesn't matter what Kaseya server you're on. Uh, these are my, my four steps to patch management. They begin with what's called membership in a patch policy. So when you look at your membership in a patch policy, now you may have different memberships here. We've narrowed it down to these two, these two templates, and, and some, some of you in K2 might even only have one template, the master template. So you can see all my machines are applied to the master template. The rule here is make sure that all your machines are a member of some patch policy. Never, ever, 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 ever remove it. Okay, you might be tempted to remove it. You may say, hey, I, I got Chris's machine here. I do not want that machine to be patched. I want to remove it from the membership. It's the worst thing you can do. A patch policy is your filter between Microsoft and your machine. If you remove the filter, every single patch known to mankind that can be applied to that machine will be applied to that machine. It's a bad day when that happens. Search 4.0, Silverlight, Bing Toolbar, you name it, it will get installed because you have removed the filter. Okay, so always read this last line here. All patches will be installed regardless of the policy settings if it's not a member. So just make sure it is a member. If you're using templates, there's no reason for it not to be a member. But just every so often as you go through your weekly um, you know, review of patch management, doesn't hurt to just take a quick look-see here and make sure that everybody's a member of a group. Second thing is scanning your machines on a regular basis. It doesn't have to be daily. We, cho we choose to scan daily. I should have probably left that message up there. When you have machines that are not scheduled, that's, you're not going to get any information about patching. You should always schedule your machines at some interval, whether it be every day, every couple of days, once a week. Again, our best practice is just to go ahead and try to do it every day. Um, and then you can select. We'll talk about some different ways. Uh, there may be different times that you need to patch or, or scan to make sure. We're going to talk about you know laptop. Um, you know, patching laptops versus workstations. But basically, again, just one of those things that you want to review is the um, system being scanned on a regular basis. These things that are not scheduled, there's no reason. Even if you don't want this machine to be scanned, you would want to go in there and schedule that scan to happen, okay? Um, in, in, my, in my case, I just happen to have two agents on the machine, and this is the one I don't want scanned. It's scanned on another machine, okay? All right, third rule of patch management is the big one. It's called automatic update. This is where the rubber meets the road. If you, when you want to apply patches using Kaseya, this is where you control it. And if you do not want your machines to be patched by Kaseya, this is where you eliminate it. So if you decide, for example, these machines were audit machines um, that I was using, so I don't want to patch them, but I'm still, I'm still scanning them, I'm still making them a member of a group, but I'm just not going to actually patch them. So I would go in there, well, first of all, use the audit template, but I could go in there and simply hit cancel. So if you have a server that you don't want to patch, so maybe it's a very sensitive server, legacy server, it's got old software on there, you look at it cross-eyed, it crashes on you, you know, you don't want Kaseya to be in charge of patching on that machine. This is where you go in, you simply select that machine, and you hit the cancel button. And at that point, it will never be patched by Kaseya. Okay, so um, you know, just again, review this. Make sure that you you have it. Uh, everybody knows the skip if machine offline. Okay, at ten fifteen at night, if that server is offline, what do you want Kaseya to do? Do you want it to wait till tomorrow, or do you want it just to schedule it for the next day? If you tell it to wait, which is unchecked, then it when that server comes up, which server is probably a bad example, but the machine came up at 9 o'clock in the morning, boom, patches would begin to be applied to that machine. That, this is a common um, setting across all scripts in Kaseya, whether uh, or, you know, di different things you can do. Do you want to skip or not skip? So in this case, we're saying on the servers, you know what, we're going we're, we're gonna to skip if the server's offline uh, because if you're doing management on it, you know, maintenance on it at 10 o'clock tonight and you're booting and rebooting, the last thing you need is like a process running when you're done. It'll catch up tomorrow when you're ready. Uh, workstations are the same thing. However, on laptops, 
you know, we're going to try to patch those in the middle of the day. We'll, we'll talk about some different, you know, ways of dealing with patch management. Okay. So again, third rule, you just want to make sure that all the machines that you want to be patched by Kaseya are in fact scheduled to be patched here. Again, the occurrence can change. We'll talk about different, you know, ways of doing that a little later, but make sure it's scheduled at some, whatever you want to do, whatever your recurring level is. Okay. Um, next is uh, the last of the four, four rules. I'm going through these kind of quickly is the magic reboot action, right? After we apply the updates, what do we have to do? Well, 10, you know, nine out of 10 times there's a reboot involved. So we have what's called a reboot action. And you can set the reboot action to do anything you want. Um, those of you that have done this with us before, you know that servers are rebooted Sunday at 2 a.m. That is the standard default. But of course, everything in Kaseya is changeable. If you don't like Sunday at 2 a.m., feel free to change that. Uh, the, the most common answer that people get when they don't, they're not comfortable with Kaseya automatically rebooting their server is this bottom option here. Hey, do not reboot after an update. When a reboot's required, boom, send, send me an email. Let me know that it needs to be updated. And at that point, Kaseya will not uh, reboot the server. Okay? And, and you'll have to schedule that to reboot. On workstations, uh, laptops, our, our choice is generally this one up here. If a user's logged in, ask to reboot every 60 minutes. Or if they're not logged in, reboot immediately. So again, if, if, you, if, you, um, if you prep your customers and you tell your customers, hey, I need you to leave your machine on tonight, but log off. Log off and leave your machine on. Right? Don't shut it off. That's what, they, that's what you need. If they listen to you, and we all know they're not going to listen to you, right? Some will, some won't. The ones that will listen to you are going to be happy campers. They should never see the patch nag screen, all right? Because once the patches are applied, the reboot happens immediately. So whatever time we apply them, 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night, if a reboot's needed, boom, it gets rebooted right away. They come in the morning, they log in, life is good. Now, then there's the other camp, the ones that don't listen to you. That's a problem. So you've got, in those that group, they're divided into two groups. The first group are basically the ones that just get up and go home, right? They don't log off. They just walk away. The screensaver kicks in. They're the ones that are going to get the nag screen. Every hour, you know, it's going to pop up. Patches have been applied. Do you want to reboot? And they'll say no. Patches have been applied. Do you want to reboot? They'll say no. On and on and on. Eventually, we always win, right? You know, it's, it's uh, sooner or later, they're going to give up and get tired of that. Uh, maybe not without a few choice emails to you in the process um, complaining about the nag screen. But, hey, prep them. You know? In fact, we've got a script. Uh, if you ever need it, it's over on the script. It, it'll pop up. Uh, uh, we run it every six days, and it basically pops a message up on the screen that says, hey, you need to leave your machine on, you know, and just try to brainwash them a little bit. So, um, but it, bottom line is just push back on them say, hey, I need to do this. If you had logged off last night, you wouldn't have gotten this message. Uh, you know, in the future, if you do that, we'll be okay. Uh, the second camp are the ones that sh insist on shutting their machine off every day. Uh, you know, maybe they're uh, trying to save some money on electricity, save the planet, whatever the reason. Uh, it's all perfectly good. It just interferes with us getting our jobs done. We, ne we are trying to do those uh, tasks after or outside of business hours. And now what they've done is they've prevented us from doing that. So what do you do? Well, there's a couple of strategies for that. Um, the most common thing would be either to start scheduling these scans during the middle of the day. Um, you know, basically do the patch scan, say at lunchtime, do the, um, the actual patch application maybe in, you know, before they go home. That's kind of how we try treat laptops. So you might treat it like a laptop. Uh, you may choose to just simply um, run it, try to run it at 10 o'clock at night with the normal patches but then uncheck that skip if offline, which means when they come in in the morning at 9 o'clock, it'll apply the patches in the morning. So whatever, whatever way you do it, I mean, you're going to have to make a change to some of the defaults if you, de if you determine that your machines aren't getting patched. Okay. So that's it, guys. Those are, you know, just a quick review of, you know, the four steps um, of, of patch management. Uh, let me flip back here to um, the, the screen. So... Uh, Again, you know, make sure everybody's a member of a patch policy. Scan your machines at a regular interval. Uh, make sure you've got your automatic update set correctly. And then uh, make sure you reboot according to whatever way you want to reboot. And we'll talk about some other ways too. All right.